Hi, last week one of my clients asked me about a report that would show all of the 1099 invoices. It would show the vendor information, whether or not there was an address and whether or not there was a tax ID number. They said they also wanted to see the 1099 box so they can make sure that not only did they have all the information they needed to prepare 1099s, but that the right box was selected for that transaction as well. We're going to do this today through the use of SmartList Designer. And this is a tool that came with SmartList in GP 2013 Service Pack 2 or later. So let's do this now. We'll open up SmartList. And what we're going to do, you'll notice that if you're not on the current version, you'll notice there's a little bit of a difference. It, the new is in the left as opposed to search. So this is where we can create a new SmartList object. These are objects. So if I open up the purchasing series, I can see payables, objects, and so forth, and I could open up and see individual objects. So what we're going to do is click on New, and we're going to start creating our objects. So let's give our list a name. So 1099 Paid Transactions. The product is what uh, Dynamics GP Dictionary it goes in. So this one will fall in Dynamics GP and the series will be purchasing. I'll then open up the database or the tables for Dynamics GP and then the purchasing series and there are a lot of them so it might take a few minutes for them all to open. And I know the tables I want are the paid history because I'm only going to look at this report with history and the vendor ID. So let's start with the paid history. So we're going to open up PM Paid Transaction History and I could select all the fields that I want. I'll make sure and include voucher number because the voucher number is the unique number for every individual invoice that exists. I'll select vendor ID, document type, document date, document number, document amount, 1099 amount, and that should be it. Oh, let's also include voided. We want to make sure we uh, do not include those pesky voids. So let's click on Execute Query and we'll see the query start to form as we go along. Now we want to make sure we exclude voids and we don't want to have to worry about doing that within the search criteria. So let's just come in and put a filter in that now. We'll put in a filter for void is not one. We could have just as easily done void is zero. We can execute the query again. And if I clicked on T-SQL, I could start to see my SQL quote, uh, code for whatever I'm filling in here, populate. Fabulous. Now let's get the vendor information. So I'm going to close that one up and we're going to scroll down until we find PM Vendor Master. There it is. So we'll open that one and we'll select the vendor name, addresses. We'll just select address one and two, city, state, zip. Let's also add contact and phone number in case we need to call them. We'll scroll down. We'll select the tax ID number. We'll also select the 1099 type and the 1099 box. Now the fact that we have two tables selected, we do need to create a relationship between the two tables. So I'll choose payables transaction, uh, payables pay transaction as my primary table. And I'm going to select when the vendor ID there is equal or inner join to the vendor ID in the vendor master file. That's how it'll know that they're selected. So now if I click on execute, I'm not getting an error message and this is an indication to me that I have indeed selected properly. Now what I'm going to do is tell it when box when the 1099 box is not equal to zero and that will ensure I'm getting all 1099 types. So again under filter I will select the 1099 box number and is not zero. And I'll execute my query one more time and now you could see I'm just getting 1099 types. So when I'm finished here I can simply click on OK and now you'll notice under purchasing I have this new object called 1099 paid transactions. I can make edits to it as I see fit and now I can dump it out into Excel. Now by the mere fact that I've included the do, uh, document dates here. That's a good uh, indication for me or uh, something I could use then in search to narrow it down to just a particular year. 
So I might want to come in and say when the document date is between the beginning of the year, beginning of calendar year, and the end of calendar year. And then this way, oh, let's also come in, set that record high, and now I can look at all the transactions for this calendar year, and then just quickly verify over on the right. Do I have addresses in for everyone? Do I have tax IDs in for everyone? And is this the right box type? And I can see here I'm missing two very important pieces of the puzzle. I hope this helps. Thanks. And this is just for you, Ernest.